Um, we were talking just off air. I'll come. I'll come to it. Uh, but we were talking about your unbelievable breadth of military knowledge. It's just mind blowing. And thanks for the producers for throwing that on just before we got on here. Uh, <laughs> but you managed to do the thin red line and saving Private Ryan at the same time. I mean, yeah, just <laughs> mind boggling. How so? It was Mike Stokey who was doing the thin red line. Am I correct? And then you, did you split up to do Private Ryan? And you're sending each other messages via what? The no internet? They didn't have an internet then. No, no we weird. had the <clears throat> we had jungle drums, um, essentially a piece of bamboo, and we beat on it. <laughs> and I had the Navajo uh, smoke signals. You did. You did. That's but Terrence okay. Malick right. and uh, Steven Spielberg, evidently, that we heard yeah. through the pipeline, were talking uh, a lot. They were in communication, Eastern right. or uh, European theater versus, you know, Pacific theater. Right. And who, where, I am going to go into my questions in a second. Who has the knowledge here? This is just fascinating to me because, you, I mean, you, all three of you are, 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 are um, uh, ex Marines, you've all done all these tours. But at former. What, pardon me? Former. You're not, former. You never. Wives are ex. Former. Sorry, I meant to say former. You're still Marines. I'll, I'll get it right in a second. But where, who, where are you getting the knowledge from? Where do you get the knowledge to know about the guys in Guadalcanal? Where do you get the knowledge to know about the guys that landed at Normandy? Where do you get the knowledge about Easy Company? Are you, do you have historians that work with you, or are you also military historians? Yeah, I think I think the latter is what it is, Matt. Um, for the most part, uh, everybody that works with us uh, is kind of forced by what we do to be uh, at least an amateur historian. Right. Uh, you've got to know where the research is. You've got to know where the material is. You've got to know, in some cases, the people to talk to. Um, and you have to do a detailed, deep dive into things like that. Uh, in, in my case, um, I did it for, you know, two decades of, of active service. Uh, all my time was spent reading about things and, uh, and researching things and in some cases, actually visiting the battle sites and, and so on and so forth. And then taking that right. and sort of running it through the card shuffler in my mind and, and, um, and coming up with what I thought was an interesting take on this fight, that fight, who fought it, what they were about and who they were. And, and to some extent, I then communicate to my guys and my guys do their own research. I mean, they're interested. Um, they all have military backgrounds and, and they go into this stuff knee deep. And then um, we, we put all that together, develop a plan on how we're going to uh, recreate it, if you will, for the director or the writer or the storyteller or whatever we're working for. Yes. And, uh, and then we develop the plan and we put it into action as we did in, in I guess, 50 some films now. How did um, I've got, I've got this? I'm leading to something here. How did you three meet? Well, um, I'll, I'll just take, I'll put my take on it and then let, let the guys talk okay. about it. Okay. But uh, uh, I've known Mike for 50 years. Uh, he and I were young NCOs together in Vietnam. Wow. Um, and so, uh, you know, I've, I've trusted him with my back forever. And he, I think, trust me with his. Uh, so we, we have a shorthand, a communication that, that's very easy. He, he knows what I'm thinking before I think it half the time. Right. And uh, Freddie Joe uh, was one of our uh, originals that uh, I, uh, I <coughs> excuse me, I interviewed and then uh, hired uh, when we were doing uh, Starship Troopers uh, with Paul, Paul, Paul Verhoeven. Yeah, yeah, right. That's yeah. crazy. So anyway, I'll, I'll let the guys give you their take yeah, yeah, on how yeah. it all occurred. Let's start, let's start with Freddie Joe. Hello, Freddie Joe. It's great to see you again, by the way. Great to see you too. Um, yeah, I, I, I had just got out of the Marines. I, I'd been out about a year. Couldn't figure out, like every other Marine, couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I knew I wanted to drink, but that was about the only thing I knew. Um, and a bunch of my friends were like, hey, they're looking for former military guys to do this audition. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then, of course, being a Marine, I'm like, I'm the baddest asshole ever walked the face of the earth. And uh, uh, so I went to the first little audition, met this guy, uh, Mr. Bell, I think. I can't remember the casting. Ball or Bell. Um, he stepped in front of me and said, oh, are you an outdoorsman or military? And, and I basically, you know, can we cuss on this? 
hundred percent. It is. It, okay. it's also <laughs> if you want to, my face, they looked at him. You know, I, I still had my little Marine Corps haircut, and I looked at him and he said, "Don't I fucking look like I was in the military?" And that was it. He just walked away, and then I got a call to come back to this hotel. The, it used to be the Hilton. It's something now. And uh, I was driving semi truck at the time, so I had my truck parked out in the cold weather outside in April in Casper, Wyoming, and uh, walked in. And I went through the doors, and I was like, "What am I doing here?" It was like a Ken and Barbie show. Everybody's in there doing push-ups, and the girls are getting their shirts tight. And I was had a, my name on my shirt and cowboy boots and baseball hat, and walked in there, and everybody kept going. And they were in there for five, six minutes, and. Then all of a sudden, I'm like the one of the last ones. The farms were, uh, and all I remember is when I first seen Cat walk in, um, Outbreak was on, and I'm like, oh well, at least I get to meet a movie star, no matter what happens of this. <laughs> and uh, so he, I, I do remember him talking, and he had that distinctive Marine kind of talk from the diaphragm, not from the throat talk when he was saying. He said, "You're going to come report to me. I'm going to have you do a couple things, and blah 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 blah." And so I walk in there. I only know one thing. Start fire report order. That to attention. He was looking down. He looked up. Marine? Yes, sir. What unit? Suicide Charlie, first time seventh Marines. I fucking hate the seventh Marines. Give me a bunch up. So he jumped out and started doing push up. All right, recover. Get the fuck out of my office. Oh shit. And I'm I go out and all those Ken and Barbies were like <laughs> and uh like five minutes later, he walked out and said, oh, you all go home, Freddie Joe, John Barnett, all military guys, stay. Everybody else, get the hell out of here. That was it. That's how I met him. And and, uh, and I just, over the years, just observed him and watched him, learned from him. And it's just been a wonderful, amazing experience. 